Welcome to the fascinating world of synthetic biology where science and innovation come together to shape the future life itself. In this video, we will explore the incredible potential of synthetic biology and how it is revolutionizing various fields from medicine to genetics and beyond. What exactly is synthetic biology? Like the word synthetic suggests, synthetic biology is a field that combines biology, engineering and computer science to design and construct new biological parts, devices or systems or to redesign existing ones to make them useful to us. Think of it like a redesign. To understand more about synthetic biology, we need to understand one of the most essential building blocks of all life, proteins. Most of the executive functions are done by this class of biomolecules like structural support, signaling, enzyme action, etc. Before we further delve into what proteins do, we need to understand what proteins are made up of. Proteins are long chains of amino acids similar to beads or a necklace. These chains fold into specific three-dimensional shapes based on their function. Our body obtains amino acids from the food we eat, including protein-rich sources like dairy, meat, eggs, soy, and lentils. Proteins are essential for our body's functioning. Proteins can range from 50 to 2000 amino acids in length, and each amino acid can be chosen from a set of 20 options. So, how does the body know which one goes where? DNA serves as an instruction manual or a blueprint for the order of amino acids in proteins. This process is known as the central dogma of molecular biology. In 1958, Francis Crick, a renowned Nobel laureate, proposed this concept which explains how information flows from DNA to protein. To simplify this process, let's use an analogy. Imagine the DNA blueprint as a soft copy in binary that needs to be printed. The blueprint is then decoded into a legible form known as messenger RNA or mRNA for short. The mRNA acts as a delivery system transporting the printed copy to ribosomes which are the protein factories of the cell. The ribosomes then utilize the blueprint provided by mRNA to assemble the final structure of the protein analogous to stringing beads on a necklace. In summary, DNA contains the instructions for protein synthesis which are then transcribed into mRNA. The mRNA carries its instructions to ribosomes where proteins are synthesized based on the provided blueprint. While humans only have DNA in the nucleus, bacteria do not have this separation. They have an extra circular loop of DNA called plasmid which is removed from the nuclear DNA. Its genes depend from bacteria to bacteria and you can think of it as something as sort of giving superpowers to the cell, distinguishing it from regular non-plasmid bacteria. Depending on the contents of the plasmid, it can make the bacteria look antibiotic resistant, able to produce certain enzymes, etc. Why are plasmids so important in synthetic biology? Scientists realize that the plasmid DNA can be manipulated. This means we can add or remove certain bacterial characteristics simply by adding or removing genes from the plasmid. This method of genetic engineering is called recombinant DNA technology. It involves infecting plants or animals with genetically modified plasmids, inducing the transformation of their host cells. One of the groundbreaking applications of this technology is the synthetic production of insulin. What scientists realized is that we could make bacteria called E. coli produce insulin subunits by inserting the required genes into the plasmids. These subunits were then linked together externally and sold to diabetic patients so that they can manage their sugar levels. Earlier, Insulin used to be extracted from the pancreas of domestic animals like cows and pigs. But the invention of synthetic insulin made this process comparatively easier and hassle-free. Another example 
is a study conducted in UCL adding fluorescent proteins from jellyfish to other animals like zebra fish or even cat. This enables the fish to glow in the dark and is now being used as a way to track pollution in the seas. Green fluorescent protein or GFP can also be used to tag other proteins and track them. Before we proceed further, let's clarify the difference between synthetic biology and recombinant DNA technology. Synthetic biology is a multidisciplinary field that designs and constructs new biological systems from scratch or redesigns existing ones employing principles from biology, engineering and computer science. On the other hand, our DNA technology or recombinant DNA technology focuses on the insertion of specific genes from one organism into another, typically to express desired traits or produce valuable products like insulin or green fluorescent protein. While our DNA technology is a crucial component of synthetic biology, the latter encompasses a broader scope of creating innovative biological solutions. Now moving on to a topic that everyone has heard far too much in the last few years, COVID-19. The word coronavirus is actually a misnomer for the SARS-CoV-2. Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome Coronavirus 2 As it is a family of viruses, COVID only being one of those. The main method to control the pandemic after preventive measures was the creation of a vaccine. This is where Synbio comes into the picture, including the large-scale manufacture of vaccines using bacteria. Not only that, it is also used for understanding the impacts of the disease on the human body by analyzing cell metabolic pathways, making models of various COVID-19 variants and even for diagnosis. One important diagnostic tool that everyone must have heard of is RT-PCR. This stands for Real-Time Reverse Transcription Polymerase Chain Reaction. Yes, that is a very long name. So how is this helpful in diagnosis, particularly in cases that are asymptomatic? For asymptomatic patients, the virus quantity is present in such low amounts in the nasopharyngeal and oropharyngeal swabs that it cannot be easily detected. What RT-PCR does is that it amplifies that amount. Think of it like a photocopy machine that finds a virus copy in the test sample and then multiplies it. RT-PCR is then used to generate genetic matter about a billion times the original amount. Then the COVID test can be carried out with much more material to work with. What are some other uses of Synbio? Beyond medicine, synthetic biology can contribute to environmental solutions as well. One of the possibilities is using cyanobacteria, which is a type of photosynthetic blue-green algae, to fix global warming. It is capable of flourishing in all environments. They grow extremely fast, doubling in number every three hours, and scientists want to modify them to be even more efficient and tolerant. The cyanobacteria can even be used to produce high-performance biofuels or chemicals in carbon-fueled bioreactors. So, what exactly is a biofuel? It is a fuel that is produced over a relatively short time span from biomass, rather than the very slow natural processes involved in the formation of fossil fuels such as coal or crude oil. This means that it is renewable, carbon neutral and helps manage the waste crisis. One of the best candidates to produce biofuel from is Jatropha curcus. It is a plant commonly found in Indian forests and wastelands. However, due to some drawbacks of Jatropha cultivation, there aren't enough seeds to produce the oil from. Through synthetic biology advancements, the Iser Pune IGEM 2023 team is working on producing a Jatropha based aviation biofuel using the Jatropha curcus genes and introducing them into Yarovia lipolytica, a yeast species. Synthetic biology's potential extends beyond medicine and genetics, paving the way for innovations in energy and environmental sectors, just like the promising Jetropha-based biofuel. Together, 
we can shape a more sustainable and eco-friendly world.